going to introduce to you what she referred said that someone referred to her as as the pioneer of the UW Extension Homemakers, Mrs. Ruth Schultz. You betcha. Well, first of all, it's very nice to see some of my neighbors here and lots of old homemakers. Maybe not so old homemakers, but it's great. And there are a couple of people that I would like to introduce to begin with. Um, Miriam Erickson is here. Will you stand up, Miriam? This was Miriam Eckert, and she followed me as the county home agent. And June Michaels has been helping me <clears throat> a great deal with newer things that I don't know about. Uh, this year, we are celebrating 100 years of University of Wisconsin Extension. And um, that's... Um, I wasn't there in the beginning, but I was the closest thing to it. So <laughs> I'm the one that gets to be the pioneer, I guess. Um, some of you might not know that. Well, actually, Wisconsin's extension started with sending out a man um, who uh, went around the state, and especially in Oneida County, and the reason for extension uh, was to take the University of Wisconsin, which was a land-grant college, to the people of the state. And they, they were to bring out the research, um, all the new ideas, and uh, every corner of the state should have um, something to do with the University of Wisconsin. And that was true in the, the Smith Labor Act was passed in 1914. Um, and that was Congress passed uh, the act which created cooperative extension services, establishing relationships between counties, states, and the USDA, and made federal funds available for the extension activities. The idea was that it would take the colleges to the people. And we hope that it's done that for many years. Um, ben Russi was the first county agent in Door County full time. He came in 1927. He was the county agriculture agent. And um, maybe some of you remember that he traveled around to the counties. George says he does. Um, he then uh, resigned and became a supervisor um, for the state extension. So he had the whole Northeast District to take care of. Then my good friend G.I. Mullendore came. And Mully was um, a wonderful friend of mine. He, uh, he was a jokester. He loved to tease. And uh, the day that I signed the contra my contract, night, the aid committee was there. You'll see that later. Um, he said, well, he said, I hope you like Door County. Um, you know, you have to go to Washington Island, and we drive across on the ice. And it wasn't long ago we lost a basketball team. <laughs> and suddenly the rest of them all started to laugh. I must have had a look on my face like, I'm not sure I want this job. <laughs> but I did want the job. I wanted the... Um, Door County job, there were three openings in the state, and I was, that Door County was the one I wanted to come to. And I was very fortunate, and if you go on to the next, uh, this was Mildred Brady, and she was the uh, second home agent. The first one was Dorothea Steckling. She came in 1942, two, 44, and uh, she stayed a couple years, and then Mildred Brady came well, fortunately for me, Mildred married the county agent, and they did not allow you to have a, a married couple in the same office. Um, so we can, uh, oh, and Mildred, many of you might have had Mildred as your uh, home ec teacher um, in, um, at Sebastopol. She was there for many years after she left Extension. You can go on to the next one. <laughs> this, this was my uh, college graduation picture. 
And I was actually a dietetics major, but my senior year was the first I knew about extension. And I can tell you that <clears throat> I decided sitting in a little cubicle planning diets was not for me. So I quickly took the home ec courses so I could get a home ec degree. And um, I didn't want to teach, but I wanted to go into extension. <laughs> and um, so that's, this, this is the um, contract that I had. And um, <clears throat> I think it's kind of interesting because I think the um, state paid, was it 800 or, wait a minute here. Oh, the University of Wisconsin, in cooperation with the United, uh, with the, um, I need my glasses, I guess. Oh, the Department of Agriculture will pay uh, $2,200. And the Door County would pay 800 So I had this wonderful salary of $3,000 a year. And I thought I was just in great shape. We also had an $800 a year expense account that was to pay for your gas and your meals in the county. If you went out of the county, the state would pay for that. And at the end of my first year, I had money left over, so I bought a, a little featherweight sewing machine for the office. It wasn't long ago, the new home demonstration agent, she's not called that anymore, um, found it up in the attic. She had it uh, cleaned and repaired, and it works beautifully, she said. So, um, I, some of you would know the, um, <clears throat> the people that signed the, the, uh, the uh, contract, I think. I was, uh, Harry Schuyler was uh, chairman of the board, and um, you want to stop a minute? But <laughs> you're trying to. <laughs> okay. Curtis Tronson was the superintendent of schools. Ben Russi signed it. And then the Ag Committee was, uh, signed the contract. And they really were, they were very nice to me. I, I, I was really nervous going into that interview, I remember. Well, we can go on. This is how we learned. Actually, we taught many, many projects that we had no idea how to teach. So we did go to the um, uh, specialist, uh, and this was Gertrude Hoffman, and it was several counties, and this probably was in Appleton, and uh, we learned whatever we were supposed to be teaching that month. So you would go home, and uh, your homemaker clubs, and there were 14 when I started, um, would be divided into three units, and each club sent two uh, representatives to the center uh, to learn the project and take back to the, the county. However, um, that uh, didn't always happen. Some of them missed, and then you were invited to come out at night and uh, give the project. So there was a lot of at night meetings and, and a lot of um, things going on. Um, we had many things that we did, and one of the, one of the things that we, and wait, before I go any farther, I want to tell you to interrupt, please, any time. I might not have things straight even, and, and I, you know, it's a long time to remember anything. Um, but interrupt and add anything. I know there's some homemakers here that uh, have stories to tell. So, um, but I was starting to tell you about my good friend Molly and I. Uh, in 1952, um, they started, they had the first television station in Door County, or not in Door County, in Green Bay. And they didn't have enough programming so they would invite all of the counties around to send people to do programs. Well, they were live. And let me tell you, they were a fiasco <laughs> if there ever was one. Uh, the first one I did was at Christmas time, 1952. And um, <clears throat> I decided to make a Swedish tea ring. So I 
got my dough all ready to go that night. And I, well, I had one all made, and it was beautiful, decorated for Christmas. And I was supposed to do the dough and take that down and then show how you roll it out and, and do the whole thing. Well, I decided that it was important that this dough would raise, and it was a cold night. So I put twice as much yeast in the <laughs> batter. I put it next to the heater in my little 49 Chevrolet. And when I got down there, it was all over the floor of the car. <laughs> so there was nothing I could do but just plop it all back in again <laughs> and take it in. And so I started to introduce my program. And everybody was kind of going like this at me. And I'm just going ahead with what I'm supposed to be doing. I turned around the hot lights my dough was all over the table. <laughs> well, Molly was supposed to be doing a program on poultry, and he brought a chicken that night. You can imagine what this program was. <laughs> uh, I wondered why would they would ever invite us back, but apparently they were really hard up for programs. <laughs> anyway, Molly was going to, at the end, there's some way you can tuck a chicken's head under. I don't know about it, but it will be kind of hypnotized by going like this. Well, Molly's going like this, and he was supposed to say, and it's time to put the chickens to sleep. And they kept going like this to him. <laughs> to him. He didn't realize he was supposed to stop, so he kept going and going, and I'm standing there. <laughs> it was a fiasco. <laughs> My next one, um, I was going to do some sewing. When I got there, they didn't have a place to plug my sewing machine in, so they used an extension cord and ran it through, under the door and out somewhere. I'm sewing away, and suddenly it won't work. The plug came unplugged, <laughs> plugged them, so I'm, I spent the whole time I was giving the program turning the wheel <laughs> on this little machine. But those were some of the things we did in those days, and of course, uh, it was great. It was great fun. It was a wonderful job. I love it. Yes. What year? This was 1949, and I have to tell you about my first day on the job. I, you know, I was so excited about this, all dressed up, ready to go. It was fair time coming up, and but I was to go to the report to the courthouse. So I arrived at the courthouse and Mildred said, we have to clean the uh, fair buildings out at the fairgrounds. <laughs> well, I've never seen it. You now, don't think that the junior fair building that's out there now is the one that we had. This was the dirtiest building with food cases filled with cobwebs and flies and everything. Well, we spent two days cleaning buildings, uh, getting ready for the fair which was always a big deal. To the fair was every year, and of course, the other thing we did was uh, uh, judge fairs. And, uh, do you want to go on now? Yes. I watched a lady pulling a fish, and uh, it must have maybe been the lights also. <laughs> she had a terrible mess. <laughs> I remember. But I never thought of the lights, but that might have been part well, of it. Well, that, that probably <laughs> was. I remember that I felt like I was sweating like a butcher before I got done with that show. <laughs> oh, yeah, I put it together. <laughs> it was so dirty by the time I got it done. <laughs> You know, I put this in because uh, I, I think I got the short straw. Uh, one of the things, before we had the livestock show here in Door County, our 4-H our kids, and of course I was part of the 4-H program, and George Stanick was the 4-H agent, but uh, for some reason or other he couldn't go and Molly couldn't go, so I went with the band, to the banquet with this winner of something in the livestock show, and he's a Door County boy. I brought it because I thought maybe somebody would know who he is. I can't remember. I can't remember who he is. And, but um, anyway, we went to the banquet, and you can go on. In the, 
We also had a, a um, um, 4-H um, camp. We had a camp for a week, and it was at the um, Horseshoe Bay. They had a lodge at that time. It was going to be a hunting lodge, I think. Did you continue with that camp? And you went there. That's how I met Howard. What? You what? That's how I met Howard, my husband. Oh, that's how you met him at the... Uh, well, actually, I met him at the, but mine at the 4-H camp. <laughs> I did. The egg teacher uh, at Sebastopol it brought him over to introduce him to us. Uh, Molly was there, of course, and I don't know if George was. And the cooks were Ann Rip and uh, Alice Free were cooking for us, and they always cooked at the school. Well, um... They brought Carl over to meet us, and Ann had just baked um, butter horns. So I gave him one and told him I made them. <laughs> so. That must be why they just continued it, because we were losing all our agents. What? That must be why they just continued the camps, because we were losing all our agents. Oh, <laughs> maybe that was it. <laughs> Well, uh, two of the girls, uh, uh, this one and this one are Fellner girls, yeah. and they were coming to help us at camp. That's Maria and Agnes. Yes. And um, this is a Schmidt girl, Otmer Schmidt's daughter. And uh, I think she might have been one of the older ones and was helping, too. Um, the one next to Molly on the, the, it was a friend of mine from Wyweega who had a life-saving badge, and she came to help me that week. And uh, then Molly. Um, and we had the boys upstairs and the girls downstairs. <laughs> and we would have square dances at night. Um, it, one problem I had, um, I heard crying one night. And I had a room uh, off the kitchen, and I, but I could hear crying in the girls. And so, of course, I ran in there right away. It was a little girl from Washington Island. She had never been off the island, and she was homesick. This is in the middle of the night. <laughs> I promised her I would get her to the ferry as soon as we could get her there in the morning. So I ended up, she came and slept in my room. <laughs> But uh, I, always, I often think of that because uh, times were very different. Everybody on the island gets off the island very easily now. But there were kids that didn't, and it was interesting. Okay, we can go on. I think the next one is, are all the kids at the 4-H um, camp. And I guess Molly took the, or I took the pictures because... We can go on to. Oh, one of the jobs we did all over the state was judging fairs, and Miriam could tell you some great tales about judging, couldn't you, Miriam? <laughs> and this was judging clothing. Um, I think it was at Marathon County. Okay, we can go on. Uh, we had all sorts of projects, many different projects, and they don't have them today. We would spend time with the uh, uh, specialists from the university, learn how to do it. One of the favorites was refinishing furniture. And this little table, I would refinish little spots of it and put the finish on, then go to the next and take this around and uh, uh, show with all of the um, people how to refinish furniture. I think June knows more about this. This was a display at the fair, wasn't it? That was BMT, before my time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing it could have been, we, on, on National Home, or, yeah, Homemakers Week, uh, we encouraged the clubs to find somebody in their community um, where they could put a display in the, in the, um, storefront. Uh, so all up and down Sturgeon Bay we had homemaker displays. 
And, and by this time, we probably had about 22 clubs. Um, so they did that. You can go on to. And this, this was part of the fair. And wasn't that a fancy place for the <laughs> to display the clothing? But it's interesting to me because there was so much of it. And, and I would guess that it was 4-H uh, or maybe it was homemakers. I'm not sure. One of the other things we started to do, George Stanick, uh, Carl, and I started um, the Washington Island Fair. We went to the state and said, you know, Washington Island doesn't bring things over to our fair, so they miss out on displaying their um, uh, projects. And um, finally, the state agreed that they would pay the same amount at, at the Washington Island Fair as they did. And Carl can tell you, he came with me in the livestock show the first time um, were, was three animals. We had a swayback horse, a sheep, and a, a beautiful rabbit with a ribbon around his neck. <laughs> and they all got a grand prize. <laughs> they were all grand champions. But those were fun days, too. Miriam and I judged them for many years afterward. <laughs> yes? I have to say thank you, because I used to enter in all the different categories and always made enough money to pay for my kids' fair rides. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> okay, we can go on. This is, I think, another, uh, maybe June knows. Another uh, fair booth. The very first fair booth that we did at the fair, we took a great big cook stove in there, an old-fashioned cook. We, we got the men to carry it in there. It took about six men to carry that thing in there, and we put it in the booth. And that was the first one that I was involved with. This is a, this was before then. Well, we usually, we usually had fair booths um, of various kinds. Um, that, that, uh, this was the canning, and it's quite different today, isn't it? The uh, display at the fair, uh, it dwindled rapidly. Okay. And this was a display somewhere, and I don't know if it was in, but it was the various things that we did. Um, if you notice the three chairs, we, that was the first time that I think that we ever had three-day sessions for homemakers, and they were open to everybody. It wasn't just the, uh, well, it was for the clubs, but it, they were open to all the members of the homemakers. They could come. And we would um, have three days of upholstering. Well, I'm, when I started, and uh, Miriam was lucky because I think it changed before then, we carried bales of Spanish moss around in the back of my car was always full of Spanish moss. <laughs> and uh, we would spend three days somewhere upholstering uh, furniture. And then the clothing, and, and we made lampshades. That was another big thing. Any, you can go on. How many chairs did you tell me you, you upholstered? Do you remember, Ruth? Oh, yes, I wrote it down. One year, I noticed in the um, uh, newsletters that we um, upholstered 211 chairs and um, 31 sofas. And then, and then I had after that in the newsletter, we did quite a job. Then Miriam came along and she had to learn to upholster. <laughs> And I'm sure she did a lot. Yes. Did you use the Spanish moss for like the stuffing? Yes. This, you had, and then you sewed it with a very thick. You, you sewed it like almost like quilting with this long needle, and it would come. And then, uh, I think the third year that I did it, um, we got. Um, it was all done. It was all. Uh, it was only about that high and you could cut it into squares. Isn't that the way it was, Miriam? And, and we tied strings and we did everything in muslin first before <laughs> they cut their fabric out. That's right, yeah. 
Also, one woman called me one night and said she had lost her good shears. Guess, guess where they were? <laughs> they were in the, in the chair. <laughs> It might have been in a home ec room, and it might have been a program that they showed their items. Uh, I have a feeling that it was the Russell's school uh, the, the, before they had Southern Door, and uh, I think that's where the Brussels uh, group met. And I, I, I'll have to tell you a little story about the Brussels group. You would go to their Christmas party, and everybody brought a Belgian pie, and then they wanted you to taste their, theirs, <laughs> and they were delicious. <laughs> this is another one of displays. I'm I'm not sure. It might have been a 4-H display, even for the fair or something, although it doesn't look like the buildings. The other thing it could be, it, it might have been uh, just in somebody's home where they had a club meeting and, and showed what they were doing. Okay. Oh, this is, this, it just, I had to laugh because I found these old newsletters that I had sent out for Christmas, and some of them are over here. And our poor secretary had to mimeograph all these newsletters and send them out. And today they have this beautiful uh, newsletter. I think it's coming up, isn't it? And um, they, they, you can get it on the internet if you want it. It's, it's, but th this is how kind of, um, well, just old fashioned we were. <laughs> we, we didn't have uh, much of anything. Um, work with. We had wonderful secretaries. The first one was Ann Manny Gray. I don't know if any of you remember her. Uh, and the next one we had was um, Barbara Hasenjäger. Um, she, um, and she was there for quite a few years. Th these were some of the things that were in the newsletters. This is... <laughs> We had, we had one little room that George Stanick and the secretary and I all had in the courthouse. And I don't know how many of you remember the old courthouse. You went in the back door, went up the steps, and, and um, right there was our little tiny. And then Molly had a little closet where his office was. One year they sent the uh, Dr. Swingle over to be in our office. Um, he, he was the... Um, head of the experiment station at that time. And uh, during the war, he had um, been, the, he was the, what was he? he? He was the head of collecting milkweed, wasn't he, Carl? For the, for life preservers. Well, Dr. Swingle was the most interesting man you've ever seen. He was sitting, and anyway, they put him in our office, so we had four people, four desks, trying to move around in this little tiny office. And Dr. Swingle was telling uh, Ann and I a story one day. And he, his stories went on and on, kind of like mine are doing now. <laughs> but they went on and on. And he was telling this story, leaning back in one of these swivel chairs. All of a sudden, the chair <laughs> fell off of the, the uh, pedestal. He was sitting on the floor, and he never missed a beat. <laughs> he kept right on with his story. This is the new one. It's really very sophisticated, and there's a copy of it over there. This is an old picture of either um, a, probably a fall council meeting or... Um, or a um, spring council meeting. We met, uh, we met in the spring and in the fall, and he had uh, usually a luncheon. And I know they're all homemakers, but I don't. Yep. The hats were very important at that time. Ruth, and you said that if anyone can recognize 
recognize any of the faces that you would appreciate them? I would love to have them see uh, if they recognize faces. Uh, there's Mrs. Clarence Pinney over here, I know, and um, I thought this one was Mrs. Jake Schmidt, but I don't think it is. I think it's Mrs. Rabach, uh, the third one. Okay, we can. You recognize any of those? Okay. We still have our spring and fall. Do you? Come. You know, I think that this was at the Ivanhoe. Hmm? Okay. Well, there's Mrs. Arndt over on the end, uh, Maureen Weber's mother. Oh, these are old home agents. This was celebrating 50 years of, uh, I didn't think I'd ever live another 50 years, but there we are. Um, Joni Schmoke up on the top, um, and Phyllis Ansager Gunlickson, who lives on the island now. Miriam here in the corner, Mildred, myself, and the others, I really... Barbara Schmelter in the back to the left. Yes. And Joan Hauser. Joan Hauser. The second one. And who's the end? Which end? Uh, next to me. That one I don't know. Yeah. Joan Hauser. Joan Hauser. Yeah. 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 Country Circle, and June can tell you about that. I think this one here was the 30th, the 30th anniversary of the Country Circle, and we invited all the, the home economists, and we invited all of our past members that had been in Country Circle and had dropped out. So, <laughs> Elaine Polish is in the back. Seal Delsham. Um, the two on the left are home economists, one's Miriam here. Ruth Schultz is right down in the front, second to the left in the front row. Gladys Smith is sitting in front. And that's Ralph Smith's wife. Um, what's the name? Uh -oh. Mrs. Mayo. Yeah. Franny Schmeigel. Irene Lavenstein in the front. Yeah, Irene was a past member, but she... Okay. Uh, we invited all of the uh, ones that were still living. Um, I called uh, all of them, I think, um, that were on the pictures. Seal Broker Hip, I thought she was coming today. And um, Pat Miller's here. Stand up, Pat. I think you're the last. Uh, survived for 50 years and then they dissolved because our members were dying off. I can tell you a little um, bit about that because the first homemakers group was in Sebastopol and that was what they called the old Sebastopol club. It got so big and George's mom was in that. We've got a picture of that later. Um, that got so big that um, Gladys Smith, down in the bottom, decided to start a new one. So she did invite me out, and I know that it was March 1952. Um, and um, I went out and showed them how to, to uh, refinish furniture. I, I don't think there were very many people there that night, but uh, they did get started. And uh, I, the day before, I had gotten a diamond from Carl, and I suppose I was flashing it around, but <laughs> Gladys, with her eagle eye, did notice it. <laughs> and of course, most of them knew who he was because he was at school. Okay, and this is 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And still some more. Mm -hmm. Spring meetings that we held at 
this is later. This is one of the last years when we were, probably the 50th year we were in existence. At Stone Harbor, right? At Stone Harbor. Yeah. At Seal, isn't it, in the middle? Or isn't it? Danica and Elaine and, and Seal and Laverne and Hazel Fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're inside the Stone Harbor and we're sitting around the table. Now you're going back. Way back. Now George is going to tell you who. No, I can't. These are the older ones. You don't know those? I, I the names are on the back of that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know, but I don't remember. Well, that's Mrs. Paul Brown <coughs> on the end. Is that, this is, is this Mrs. One? Sergeant, Mrs. Donovan. Here. Oh, dear. It's on there. <laughs> okay. Uh, on the upper, on your upper right hand, left hand corner, it's Mrs. Henry Fail, Mrs. Ed Miller, Mrs. Arnold Stoffels. There is uh, Mrs. Kugler is next. Uh, I can't read that one. Uh, Mrs. Donovan. Can't read that. Edna Schmidt and Emma Smith. <coughs> Emma Smith is the mother of Rolf and Clyde Smith. Yeah. And uh, there's Mrs. Ed Fail, and there's Kate Red. <coughs> She used to live down on the Kinos live now. Uh, Mrs. Paul Brown and Nellie Ash. Nellie Ash is the furthest one on the right standing. And the one that is kneeling <coughs> are Ella Mathy, uh, Mrs. Pat Ritt, she was a fail, and uh, Wilma. <coughs> Wilma Brown, now who is Wilma? Oh, that's uh, that young oh, one. Oh, that's young one. That's, that's about it. She married a woman. Well, and um, Selma Evenson took the picture. <laughs> um, this club actually started out as a woman's club, and, and specialists came early in the days, and um, I think they started making bandages and um, uh, knitting for the World War I. Uh, and then they, the specialists would help them in different things and they finally became a homemakers club. And on, at the 1954 Achievement Day uh, was held in Ephraim and Josephine Zimmerman, who lived on Glidden Drive, and Emma Smith, um, Pat, um, Ralph and Hap's um, mom wrote us a program for it, and uh, I brought it. I happened to find it. They wrote a poem, and they did, they, and then they passed out cookies with the uh, Mary Donovan passed out cookies while they went on with their, our kind of. I, I had to think, our programs weren't very sophisticated in those days. I mean, we we did them on our own. Um, if the specialists couldn't come and do anything, well then the homemakers did it themselves and they did, and they did a great job. Um, I conned Miriam into being part of the program. She was going to be the new home agent and she came up uh, for the Achievement Day. And I don't know if she remembers, but Simplicity Patterns sent out a, a wardrobe of clothes to show women that you could make these clothes and we had all these models, and Miriam was one of them. I, and, um, and I remember also that I was very pregnant. <laughs> I know Mrs. Arndt on the end. My mother is the second one from the uh, uh, right, and Mrs. George Sargent is the second one from the left. And the uh, one in the middle is Nellie Ash, and the other one is Mrs. Manthe. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Mrs. Vathy. To the I, left? I don't know. The one on the far right. Uh, far right. The one on the left, I'm not mm -hmm. sure of. Well, but Mrs. Matthew is the one on the left. And then oh. Sergeant, then Ash, then your mother, and then Mrs. Art. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Art, yeah. Are they holding fly swatters? Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they made them. Yeah, maybe they made them. Because <laughs> they all look like they got handles on them. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> George tells that uh, 
they used to take the kids with them to the, which all the homemaker clubs did. They'd, if their children were small, they went along and um, somebody entertained them, I guess, while. Boring afternoon and I'm my life. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you learn to sew or anything? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> no. The lady right in the front and the, the middle and the uh, poor row is Mrs. Michael Donovan. Yeah, Mary Donovan. Um, Donovan. It's Jim Nash's mother. Vera? There's Mrs. Kugler. Hmm? There's Mrs. Kugler. <laughs> we know there were lots of things going on today. There were uh, mission festivals and all sorts of things, but we had hoped that some of the, the um, um, children of some of these older groups might have come. I see Lois is in this one. Lois Sundstrom, who's here. And there's Hazel Fail. Maria's on there. Miller. Milana. Some of you know uh, Myrtle Felloffer. She was very active. Um, I don't think she's on there, but she was on one of the 40-year uh, ones. Um, I forgot to mention that. She was, uh, she was, she had company today, and she was going to Peninsula Players. And oh, this was um, Catherine Miller. Um, well, was a homemaker that I knew quite well, and uh, one of the first. Um, achievement days that we had was held at Samuelson's restaurant. And I went up to her house and she had, she had done one of these for me to show me how to do it. And um, so I asked her if she would do it for achievement day. It's an uh, um, Austrian, is it the uh, strudel, what? It's strudel, that must be. It was a strudel. Anyway, she finally agreed to demonstrating it, and she spread it all out on the table with this tablecloth, and all of a sudden she flipped it, and it, she had put the apples and things on, and it rolled up and stopped at the edge. And from that day on, she gave the program several times. Oh, many times. Yes. yes. But uh, she was so sure she couldn't do it when she did, and it was she wonderful. Was cabbage? Well, she was, her favorite one was cabbage. She did cabbage, she did apple, she did a lot and of different she things. Had, she grew her own poppy seed, and mm -hmm. she had a special grinder. It was small, like a, like a meat grinder, mm -hmm. and it had come from the old country. And that would uh, grind up the poppy seed. Mm -hmm. And isn't that Dorothy Bird? Yeah. Yes. Ash, Karen Ash. And that looks like, Helen I don't Fluor. know. That's probably me. No, Is that's that Helen Fluor? Okay. No, Good. Mm -hmm. This is one of the newer clubs um, in Sevastopol. Yeah, there have been several since uh, the first one that ever started. No, we were the Going Gals. Going Gals. And Gladys Smith started us. Gladys started a lot of clubs. She was very, very good. Yes? Are the Homemaker Clubs still going? Yes. Oh, yes. There are. There are several. There are seven active ones in the county right now. Seven? Only seven. Actually, it's eight. We've got a new one with four members. Oh. <laughs> Just so beginning. do the extension people still come up and, and teach? No. Um, the, they, they have different projects today um, than they did. I talked to Pam about that, uh, the demonstration agent now, and she said, that the specialists don't come out at all anymore. If they do learn anything, they go, they go to the... Uh, Sometimes the extension, the, what they call them FLEs now. Um, and I know what that, that means, but it's not in my head right now. But sometimes an uh, uh, extension agent from another county will come and put one on in our county, mm -hmm. and they will exchange that way. 
with some lessons. That, we did that years ago too. The, but, uh, okay, let's move along because it's getting late. <laughs> That was an anniversary. <laughs> I have not seen these. Apparently, this was the husbands of one of the club that they came to the club meetings, and uh, I don't know what you did. Did you play cards, George? Or? <laughs> okay. And that's the hundred years of extension. Do you have any? <laughs> Some of you might like to look at some. I just wanted to address the group because I am probably, I was one of the younger ones of homemakers um, in uh, Sebastopol. I am disappointed that we don't have more of the younger ones because that group is still going. They were called the Homemades, and they were started by, oh, excuse me, they were started by June. June started our club. And, and they're still going. And I... When, when we started, we were young farm wives. Most of us were farm wives. And it was just a blessing to have extension in my life, to be invited to a group like this when you're first married and starting out and don't know how to do hardly anything. The extension was there for us. And we learned a lot of things, and we made great friends. And as a matter of fact, uh, just getting back with them, they haven't, have asked me if I want to come back to homemakers, which I'm contemplating that I will. But anyway, um, I, I just think that this program was a wonderful program, and Extension is a wonderful place. I, I wish that more people kind of knew about them, because we can go over to the, the experiment station with any of our, our problems that we have with plants and, and, and horticulture stuff. And we always have the extension office. I've called them several times to ask about canning or, or putting this or preserve or, or uh, the different combinations of ingredients that I can put together for making something. But anyway, so I just want to just uh, give you a little on the younger side view of, of, of the extension. And we are glad that you came up here, Ruth. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, June is still really, really involved with, with uh, the Extension Office, so she can talk about that. Um, and I just wanted to say that, I don't know if, if you still kept your, your cookbook in the, in the office? We didn't get it put out, but, but we, there's, a, there's a recipe over there from one of the cookbooks, because homemakers are big on sharing their recipes, so, <laughs> so one of the bars over there has uh, some recipes by it. Help yourself to one. And I'm June Michael, and I am in my 51st year of being a homemaker. And we do not call them homemakers anymore. We are HCE members. HCE stands for Home and Community Education. But in my own mind, I always think of HCE means for homemakers care for everybody. But that's not, what it, that's not the official term. I wanted to tell you about one of our projects. We read, we have a Wisconsin Bookworms trademark, TM after it, and we have readers in 39 counties in Wisconsin. And each year we read eight books to different locations in the county. We have three locations in Door County that we read to. At the end of our reading the story, last year we read, last year it was all exercise books because they were big on getting the kids standing up and not watching TV and getting a little exercise. So this one's head, shoulder, knees, and toes. This is aerobics. This is grumpy bird. This one here is with my brother, and it's got both Spanish and English words in it. The red apples. The hokey pokey, you know. Eating the alphabet. The Surprise Garden, and 
the first Tuesday, the second Tuesday in October, I will be reading the cat and the dog for the first one of this year. At the end of our reading, we give each child the book. They get to take the book home. At the end of the year, they have eight books. They have a spot in the front of the book where they can write their name. It's their book. We always tell them, be sure and tell your mommy or your daddy or your grandma or your grandpa, because some of them don't have daddies and some of them don't have mamas, or your older brother or sister. Be sure and tell them to read the story to you. Because a child that is read to learns to read. So that's our, and the, next year will be our 15th year in Wisconsin. Of, Well, we, there's a child center. As, uh, these are all preschool kids in Sister Bay. There's one in, remember, Cherry School? And that's a, there's a, and there's, two, uh, there's also a, uh, one in uh, Sunset School. And they have, that, those are just half day. So they read to them in the morning and they read to the group in the afternoon. Yeah. Is that still Head Start? Or don't it's, I, I can't tell you that. Because I used to read for Head Start for several years in the program. And really, I don't think the people in Door County realize how many little kids don't live with their mothers and fathers. And they have grandmother is the one. Because when you ask them questions, they tell you. And it's always, well, my grandma has a garden. Mm -hmm. And it, a lot of them... They don't have any books in their house at all, and they're so happy to get that book. That and it's, it, it's extended families now. It's not mothers and fathers anymore. No. It's, each family is different. Each family is made up differently, and you have to be careful what you say to the little children because you don't want to exclude them or hurt their feelings. But two years ago, we hit the 500,000 mark that's how many books we gave out in the state of Wisconsin. By next year, we'll be 600,000. And then I want to tell you about our international project. We're so involved with clean water because in Central America and South America, there are so many countries that do not have clean water. And because they are eating and drinking dirty water, there's a lot of sickness. All right, so we have found a filter, costs $62, that you put on a pail, and it purifies the water. And I want to tell you about this filter. These water filters use hollow filter membranes, a technology developed for kidney dialysis. These filters remove 99, and it isn't like ivory, it is like ivory soap, it's 99 and 999 thousandths percent of the bacteria, protozoan, and viruses from the dirtiest water. And clean, drinkable water is ready in a very short time. I mean, this is a remarkable discovery. These filters cost $62 a piece and will supply a family of five with clean water for five years. We just had our WAHCE, well, Wisconsin Association for Home and Community Education, our conference in Middleton in September 17th, 18th, 19th. We just came back from it. And we had a silent auction. At that silent auction, there were 160 items that were donated by the 366 women that attended this conference. We took in $2,380 with this silent auction. That means that we can supply between 38 and 45 families. And the reason I say between 38 and 45 is because she's found a filter that she could buy for $10 less. And she's investigating to find out if it's worthwhile to get the cheaper one. So that's one of the projects that our homemakers across the state of Wisconsin is involved in. And we also raised enough money to dig a well in Bangladesh. And we had one county, St. Croix County, that donated $1,500 toward this well. 
but the rest of the money came from donations from our homemakers here in Door County, in Kiwani County, in all the counties in Wisconsin. We also have our pennies for friendship. All of us donate to pennies for friendship and they provide multiple services for all the third world countries in the world. Right now, Door County is busy planning for our East District Fall Meeting. It's going to be on October 18th. It's going to be at the Bayview Lutheran Church here in Sturgeon Bay. There will be nine counties represented. We expect about 100 ladies to show up. We're going to have Rob Burke, US, uh, UW Extension's Community Development Educator, give a slide presentation on Nicaragua. And he's going to go into the international workshop and he's going to tell about his sabbatical to Afghanistan. So that's one of the workshops that's going to happen. And we're also busy, our East District with Northeast District is planning the conference for next year. And that will be in Manitowoc. And that will be in September 9th to 11th. And statewide, we have been working on, on reducing the number of districts because some districts only had four counties in with homemakers. I shouldn't say homemakers because that's what we are anymore, but you understand what homemakers are. And we're to even the number of counties in each district, we're reducing the districts from eight to six. And that's what we worked on at our conference. And it went through and we did it. Uh, we're HCE members. We know how to switch gears. We know how to replan. We know how to forge ahead. So it will, it will work. And last but not least, I'd like to share with you another statewide project that we are involved in. And it's called On the Move and In the Groove. And for every 20 minutes of continuous activity, it could be ironing, it can be vacuum cleaning, it can be exercising, it can be running, it can be walking, but it has to be continuous activity. We get one point. And you keep track of the points that you accumulate from March 1st to May 31st. That's the time. And then you turn it into the state. Well, not everybody turned it into the state, but the ones that did, they had 32,464 points. And the best part was there were four ladies that walked together and they lost 84 pounds. And we're continuing this next year and hopefully more of our members will participate. I have a display over here. There's um, some recipes that we gave out from our fair booth. If you would like to have one, I brought 10. I, mm -mm. They said they'd print some more if, if you want to take some home, but they're real cute. Like one of the recipes says you have to cool your cookie dough. You put it outside your window to cool the cookie dough overnight. That's in the recipe. <laughs> anyway, that's to celebrate the 100th anniversary of extension. And thank you. I'm uh, Miriam Eckert-Erickson, and I, uh, okay, I'm Miriam Eckert-Erickson, and I had the privilege to follow Ruth as uh, the home agent in Door County, and uh, I am a product of that land-grant college. My father was a dairy farmer. We had a purebred Holstein herd. We had a purebred Cordell sheep flock and pigs and you name it, um, we had it. <laughs> and I grew up in 4-H, and my dad always was very, very proud and always stressed uh, uh, the, the, that the university was a land-grant university, meaning that it got out to educate the people of the state. And that is such a, a wonderful uh, uh, policy. And I had the fortune to go to my first uh, State conference uh, with the homemakers and I was so proud uh, of the university that we are privileged to have in this state and uh, the university system 
and uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, since 1910 has been one of the top 10 universe, public universities in the United States, and it's in our state. And that means so much because of the research that this wonderful university is doing. And we had uh, some wonderful sessions. One was on stem cell development, which of course started 20 years ago at the university. Um, when I came, would you believe that uh, I was recruited and uh, the, well, Green Bay was way up north. <laughs> so you can imagine coming to Door County was way north. And then, of course, I had the privilege to meet my wonderful husband and Harry Schuyler. The first day that I started work, I uh, had a picture of me uh, with uh, my pen of, grand champion pen of lambs that I had received at the uh, Northeast Wisconsin Livestock Show in Green Bay. And that was uh, sitting on my desk. He had had that enlarged. So uh, it's always been a privilege. Education has been my life, and I've been very proud of that. I taught at Gibraltar and then uh, became a school library media um, uh, librarian. And then for C12 years, served on the Gibraltar School Board. So I just retired uh, from that. So uh, to me, the most important word uh, in a vocabulary to pass on is education. Because that is, I think, the strength of our nation. And, um, and that's what we have to really, really stress. And we're so fortunate, I think, in this county to have such a strong school system that we can be so proud of. I have a daughter that teaches in the Chicago schools. You'd be appalled because it's there's nothing in those rooms except desks and a chalkboard. And you could walk into any of our school rooms and they're not they're well equipped with many resources and very, very strong programs. So let's continue that and I'm very proud to be part of this county. It's a, it's a great county. Thank you. Thank you.